Good morning. Bear with me one second here. I was having a little bit of a technical uh, glitch here this morning, but uh, I think I've just about got it worked out. Oh, hi, Patricia. Good morning. I always seem to have some sort of technical issue. Um, but anyway, I'm here. Good morning. And um, I've got um, uh, some trees I want to paint today. So let me uh, let me just jump right in since we're kind of delayed on our, our start time here anyway. Um, There we go. Okay, so there's my my brushes I'm going to use, my palette. Um, I'm using mostly Da Vinci watercolors. I'll probably use an assortment of brushes here for what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be working with Arches 140 pound cold press paper. Let me just set this aside. I'm bringing my paper here. So that's my uh, paper. And uh, this is something, I know most of my watercolors are really high, really high, highly realistic, you know, like the ones behind me here. And, um, you know, I spend a lot of time working on them and that sort of thing. But um, for today, I thought it would be fun to just play a little, you know, have some um, quick and easy stuff, you know, making cards and, and uh, or incorporating it into your watercolors. Um, the thing with foliage, and trees and that sort of thing is that they're they're very organic right so they don't need to be they don't need that same sort of precision um, or accuracy that say uh, you know a building would have or a car or you know something something like that something man-made so when it's organic you can have um, a little more room for playing around good morning Verna hi Sue you guys know the drill. You're, you're already saying where you're from. I appreciate that. I love it. So I'm just taping down. I pre-stretched my watercolor, soaked it for three minutes in room temperature water, um, stapled it down right away while it was wet, and then I left it overnight. So now I'm just, um, you can see these edges pull up a little bit. I don't want that to tear or anything like that. And I want to keep a nice clean edge on my um watercolor that I'm going to do so I'm going to um, tape that down just for a little added security. I'm using uh, regular, this is just regular um, 3M tape like um, contractors grade masking tape and I'm using the beige one, the, the regular one because uh, the green ones and the blue ones, the ones that are called painters tape it's meant for house painters, not artists. So um, it, it's they're not as sticky, so they don't hold as well. So I like this one because it's the uh, stickiest of the tapes. This is the old-fashioned kind. I can remember many a many a times trying to use this tape before they came up with painters tape. They only had this tape, and I <laughs> used this on my walls and it would pull off the paint not fun so that's why they come come up with um painter's tape of course hi karen thanks for coming and uh, sorry for the delay i i i kept pressing the the um stream but apparently there was um two streams on the go i don't know how i managed that but uh, somehow i did <laughs> so yeah, i had two streams and it wouldn't let either one come through so all right so what i want to do here is i i'm going to take my let's uh i can probably rearrange this a little bit just so that 
I'm not taking up so much real estate here. There we go. Um, make a little bit smaller there. Okay. And um, there you can, you'll be able to see where I'm mixing my colors. Not that I'm mixing too much. I'm going to let a lot of this happen on the paper itself. So what I want to do is first I'm just going to wet my paper. But I think what I might do though is I'm just going to take a pencil and I'm going to just sort of divide this paper in half, roughly. All right, so I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to do uh, my trees, but I'm going to do them in two different seasons so that you can see the variety in, of ways in which this will work. So if you're going to have trees, you're probably going to have sky. I'm going to wet the, um, the paper here for a minute. I'm just going to take a, a squirrel hair brush. This one's like a number four. It's pretty big. Holds lots. So I'm just wetting all my paper. And as I said, it's, you know, I usually paint really, really realistically and that sort of thing. But um, sometimes you just want to have that sort of looser, um, fun, flowing kind of thing. Now, all my paints that I have here, I have pre-wet all of these. These these are all dried in the wells. These are tube paints, but I put them in the wells. I put a generous amount of water in each of these wells to soften up the uh, paint so that it'll flow well. And uh, I did that about 10 minutes ago because it takes a little while for that to, uh, to actually work. Good morning, Nancy. Good to see you too. Thank you. Um, all right, so... I'm just spreading around this water here so that it'll be uniform. I don't want puddles anywhere. I don't want any dry patches. So, all right, so I'm gonna start with a bit of sky and I'll just use a little cerulean for that first. And we'll just come in with some sky. I don't have a reference picture. Do you notice I'm working off the cuff here? That's the nice thing about organic um, subjects you know like plants and trees and that sort of thing is it's you can take a lot of um, liberty with them and you can do a little creating all right so i've got a sky there it's it's nothing too fancy um, might put a little bit of cloud in here as well so i'll just add a little permanent rose just a touch to this and that will make it kind of gray and i'll use that don't want to make these too gray because if they're too gray they will look stormy and I don't want that. I just want a little bit of warmth in the clouds so I'm just going to put in a little bit of this purpley gray that I just mixed up and that's that's enough for that. Very very simple. Okay so I'm going to start putting in my tree line here and um, I'm going to use a variety of greens and I'm going to start maybe with some yellows and uh, why don't I just mix that right down here with a little bit of that blue. All right, so I'll, I'll put in some yellows. This will be nice sort of fresh, fresh green here. And now I'll come into, um, I could mix my greens, but I'm just going to grab a sap green here and I'm going to start getting progressively um, heavier with the paint. Good morning, Diana. Hi, Dorothy. Thanks so much for coming and for being patient. I, I know I was off to a bit of a late start today. Um, okay, so I'm using a little sap green here and I'm putting this in. Now, meanwhile, what I am going to be doing is I'm going to be having a couple of little things on the side. One is a palette knife I'm going to be using. The other is um, just regular table salt, and I've got it in a little container here. So I'm gonna have that handy. Um, one thing I wanna watch here is that my brush doesn't get too wet. If my brush is overly wet, you can see that it's, it kinda grows out too far. So I'm gonna come in here and 
with my brush a little bit drier. I've blotted it now. And I'm going to come in and create some of these trees here with thicker paint. And of course, I don't mean thick as in it's sticking up from the paper. I just mean there's more paint in it. Now I could put objects into this as well, but um, just for the purpose of the demonstration, I don't think I really need too much in here. So I'm just going to come in. Now I don't want everything that's the same green. This is a this is a common mistake. Everybody puts the same green in. I used to do the same thing. Um, same green in everywhere and you end up with really boring. The other thing you don't want to do is have um, the same value. So you're going you to you're going to need some things light, you're going to need some things darker. So I'm going to be progressively adding in a little bit more um, paint as I go. And I'll be building up, I'll be layering on top of this. So there's another color, another green color here that I use quite a bit. It's called um, Perlene Green. And it's quite dark. As you can see, it's, it gives me some bright dark. Most trees are darker towards the bottom because the light source, the sky, the sun, is not getting to the lower part of the tree. So I'm putting more dark towards the bottom. And I'm using this perlene green. It's really good for that. Um, but I, I do want some different greens, so I'm going to throw in some different uh, colors into this. Like, um, how about a little quinacridone gold? That would be a really nice color to add in here, but I've got to watch my brush isn't too wet. Alright, so I'll get different colored trees, depending on the yellows that I'm using with my blues and and so on. So I can I can use a variety here to to mix up different colors. Let's use a little raw sienna. I'm just grabbing stuff quickly as I go along. See, I get a different green there. So blot my brush so it's not too wet. Doesn't look too different yet. I'm going to put more blue in it. There, that'll give me some different trees, that's for sure. Okay, so now I'm doing a lot of little dabbling on here because one thing I don't want to lose is a little bit of the the space between the foliage so you there will be little pockets of sky peeking through so I'm gonna put a little bit up here and I'm gonna keep building up and adding more and this is going to be pretty wet um, not really puddly but I'm I'm gonna keep working it so that it doesn't dry on me so I'm going to even get into some Payne's Gray because Payne's Gray is going to give me some really good strong darks just towards the bottom. So I'm really trying to develop um, a variety of color and value. And so this is coming in and building this up. Now I can use this Payne's Gray, mix it with some of the Perlene Green, get really dark green. And I can maybe uh, start adding in uh, some evergreens. So evergreens of course are going to be much darker and they may be woven in behind some of the other trees. So I can come in here and I'm just using the point of my brush to make the point the edges of the tree. And so I'm dropping that in. Right. So I'm getting my brush is progressively getting a little drier as I go along because 
I really want to have a um, little bit of definition between the trees, but part of that's going to be the color and the value change, right? So I'm not painting leaves. I'm not painting branches. I'm not doing all of that sort of thing. Hi, Melody. I might have said hello to you before. I can't remember if I did or not. But just in case I didn't, I'm saying hello again. So... Okay, so there's my, there's some of my trees. I'm going to put maybe just a few more. Um, a few more yellowy, yellowy trees back in here. You see how they look like separate trees? You know, it just looks like a, a cluster here. So if you've got like... Um, a landscape that you're doing or something like that then you know this is great for this so doing the whole thing all of, all at once don't do one tree at a time I'm gonna get some more darks down here at the bottom I'm keep dropping some more in here stick another little evergreen tucked in behind these trees here. I'm just winging it as I go along here. Um, okay, so that one's, I'm not going to bring right to the bottom. That one's going to be in behind. All right, so now the fun stuff comes in. I'm going to take my salt and on, I'm going to try not to sprinkle this on the evergreens so much as the rest. And I like to Rather than taking a salt shaker and shaking it on, um, I'm going to just sprinkle it with my fingers onto the areas where I want a little bit of effect. So what this does, putting salt on your painting, is it will um, sort of soak up the excess paint in those um, with every granule. And as, as that happens, it, it pulls in the paint from all around and it creates this really unique texture. Um, but I'm not done yet. So salt and all, I am going to take now my palette knife and I'm going to start creating some branches and trees. So um, if, I, if I do this on wet, you'll see that what happens is I have um, a dark line. So... The other thing I want to uh, mention is that I, I don't want to just take my br my palette knife and scrape a whole tree because that would mean that the tree's bare on that side if I can see the whole trunk, right? It means one side's bare. So what I need to do is I need to stop every once in a while. Now watch how I'm holding my, my palette knife. You can see I'm, I've actually got my thumb here on my palette knife so that I can really use my thumb to scrape it. Now you could be using a, a credit card or something like that and that would be fine too. But I'm just going to come along here and I have to keep breaking the, um, the stroke. I can't bring it all the way up because some of the tree branches or some of the foliage, the leaves and stuff in front are going to block your view of the branch. So you can't just take the trunk all the way up. So I can take a few here and when I scrape into wet paint, it will turn dark. You can see these ones have turned dark here. Let me zoom in on this so you can see this a little bit closer. All right, so. So in the upper part of the tree, you may only see a little bit, little bits and pieces through here. And I'm going to put a lot of trees in here. So a lot of these um, lines are going to indicate that there's many trees. Now, 
right now, ex except for these ones over here, these ones are a little bit light because this paint was a little bit drier. So that tells me that if I want to make um, birch trees, for example, I just wait until the paint gets to the tacky stage, okay? So it's not right, it's not sopping wet, it's not completely dry, it's somewhere in between. So it's a little bit um, tacky, sticky maybe. And then I can take my palette knife and since it's dry over here, I'll try one over here. So um, I'm going to push, actually I'm scraping the paint off. You can see that I'm actually pulling that, okay? so. And that can give me the look of birch bark. It may still want to fill in. I have to, may have to wait a little bit there. So the timing here, that this is a really important thing, is the timing is everything. Um, yeah, and I can, I can just, I'm starting to see some of this salt take effect. Um, you can see it over here on this right hand side. You can see the, the look. It gives the illusion of all the different foliage. So um, it's giving me a really good um, texture in those trees. All right, so I want to take this same concept and change seasons. Um, that looks really red, really orange on the screen. I'm going to see if I can do something with that. Um, I think that was that Queen Gold, which is why it's so strong. But it's all by itself, so I'm going to use maybe a little bit more of it, and I'm going to have to go certainly drier. And I'm just going to touch a little bit, maybe. Uh, maybe not. I can tell as soon as I touch that, it's not going anywhere, so I have to. Um, I'm going to have to just leave it alone. That's the hard part about watercolors, leaving things alone. You know, you want to go in and you fix, but if, if you want to get freshness in your watercolor, don't go back to fix stuff. It'll be, it'll be the death of you every time. All right, so um, that's that's sort of like the summary version. Um, not sure I'm liking this. I might put a little bit more in my trees here just before I quit on this one. I'm going to put this in front instead. Looks better. There, I like that better. And uh, that's it. And I'm not going to touch that again. I'm just going to leave the salt to do its thing. And um, my birch tree did fill in a little bit here, so I'm going to do one more scrape. There we go. All right, so de depending on the timing, you're either going to make dark lines or you're going to make light lines. So it's, it's all in the timing. Oh, absolutely, for plein air, this would be fantastic. Um, yeah, and one thing I should say about this is don't use a hairdryer with it because if you do, uh, the salt can't do its thing. And uh, I think I'd like to, I don't know if I can do any more right now, but I'm gonna try, I'm gonna stick a little more salt on there just to to get a little more texture, but the salt's not going to work if it starts to dry too much. So I'm not sure how effective that'll be. It might work, but I'm not sure. But it worked really well over here. It was just the right timing. Salt's one of those things that um, you do have to kind of watch that timing. Um, what I do for, for salt is I will take it and I'll sprinkle it on. And if it's too soon, you know right away because the granules of salt go really dark right away and just soaks in all of the color until it like these ones here you can tell this was really wet i don't know if i can hold this in the light but you can see that the granules of salt here have um, absorbed pretty much everything they can absorb so i probably am not going to have a lot of texture there unless now it's at a sticky stage and i add a little more so sometimes what i'll do with my salt is that i'll put a little on if I find out that, oh, it was a little too soon, I just wait a minute and then I add some more. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little bit more here. And we'll see what happens. Yeah, so now if this were not summer, if this were winter, for example, 
I could do a very similar effect. So I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm going to start again with my sky and uh, I'll do a different scene. I won't do the exact same one, but I'll just use clean water. I'm going to wet it again. When I wet my surface, I generally will um, let it soak in a minute. I don't rush right in with my paint, but I'll get my paint ready in the meantime. So I'm going to be using lots of cobalt, um, probably some cerulean. I'm also going to use a little bit of uh, probably burnt sienna because often what happens in the winter is you're going to get sort of the frosty look of the trees, but then you'll get... Um, you know, you get a lot of trees that really don't lose all of their leaves and they, they get this sort of coppery color as well. So a nice combination of that is looks really nice for a winter scene. Um, and I know here it is near the end of July and we're doing a winter scene, but um, it'll be here before we know it. But I'm going to start with my sky. Okay, so I'm going to start again with the cerulean. blot my brush a bit so it doesn't go too crazy. Um, we'll do kind of a dappled sky, like a dappled clouds in the sky. This is a, um, I think this is a cerulean blue hue in Da Vinci. So um, it's um, not not the same as the regular cerulean, but uh, okay. So we got a lot of like little those little clouds. Alto cumulus, I think. Somebody was going to have to look that one up. Alto cumulus. I think that's what it is, where you get all those little, little clouds. Okay, so we'll do that kind of thing. Now I'm going to get into my um, cobalt, my cobalt blue, and I'm going to start doing, um, which side will I work on here? So we'll start here with blues. Um, I'm going to make sure I get some darker blues in there too. So I'm using a color called Indanthrone. Indanthrone. And uh, it's actually a core color. It's not a Da Vinci color. It's a core color. And it's lovely. Um, so I'm putting lots of these in here. Now, of course, the, the evergreens are not going to be um, blue, so I'll be able to um, I'll be able to put those in the same as I did for the summer. They will be a little bit more blue though. They they don't get quite as green in the winter as they are in the summertime. So back to cobalt, uh, maybe a little cerulean as well. So again, I'm still trying to get some variety and uh, variety in color and a variety in um, value. That's the big key here is that that combination of um, lights and darks and various colors and the illusion that it creates is all these trees, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to put all the blue trees in first and then I'll put the green ones on top because green will be a lot darker. Okay, I better got to start working a little faster here. Now, it takes a little while for the salt to do its thing, so um, you do have to... Uh, be patient with it. So 
just playing around here, getting lots of, this is getting pretty uniform, so I need to start adding different colors of blue so that I get the feeling of different trees. In Dandron Blue, it's gorgeous color, isn't it, Karen? I love that color. Um, what I like about that particular blue, because a lot of the blues are granulating, and that one is very smooth. Like, it's a very, you can get a very nice uniform um, uh, coverage with that one. Now, I think that the paper that you're working on can make a huge difference to how successful this technique can be. Um, I know that some brands of paper, student quality paper, you won't get quite as good an effect with them because the you don't get the same absorption. They seem to, the paint seems to sit on top a little bit more. Um, okay, so I'm going to get into my evergreens now so I'm going to use a little of that um, perylene green and I'm going to start putting in some evergreens Oh, I didn't put the I didn't put the orange colors in there. I'll do that next. Okay, I don't want these trees. This is something to watch for in composition. Don't make two trees that are the exact same height. Makes them make them various heights. So this one I'll have to make taller. If they're the same, they you get this sort of salt and pepper thing, like where you know it just looks like bookends, and it's a little odd. So um, make sure that you're putting uh, various heights and so I'm variety is the name of the game here we're having lots of different colors lots of different values lots of different heights and sizes and uh, the more that you can do the more convincing your painting will be all right so I'm going to take maybe just another brush and use a little bit of um, this is burnt sienna deep and I'll put a little bit of that in there too Make sure I got it all mixed up here. It sure doesn't look like anything yet, but I do want to make sure all of this stays wet, so I'm going to make sure I'm coming in with uh, lots of this uh, wet paint. I don't keep it wet, my salt's not going to do much. But you might be thinking, well, blue trees, what? <laughs> this is the, having the trees blue is actually going to make them look frosty. It just makes them look wintry. What's the difference? Um, I don't know. Well, I mean, the burnt sienna deep is a little bit. Um, at least I find that it's a little closer in Da Vinci to regular burnt sienna in other brands. I don't know why. It seems a little more reddish um, than the regular burnt sienna, burnt sienna deep is. So, but I don't know why. Okay, so I need to balance this off. This needs another, maybe another evergreen or two. Um, I'm going to put one, I'm going to put one right here. That one's a real dark one. That's good. I'll put another one back here. And we're going to see a little bit more of this almost, a, because the trees are bare, right? So you're going to see the evergreens a little bit more, even the ones that are a little further behind. Now I've got them all evenly spaced. That's terrible. 
So <laughs> I need to uh, do something to uh, offset that. So I'm coming in and I'm adding another one in here so that I get a little bit of a cluster. This is paint. This paint's a little bit thicker as I'm adding it on um, because it's going to need to have the, the dark contrast. Not sure I'm loving this composition very well, but the idea will be here anyway. Okay, so it's salt time. So I am going to once again, now I'm not going to have that much the same kind of texture. Um, well, I can have my texture everywhere on this winter scene, so I'm going to do that. Putting my salt down and let it do its thing. Hopefully everything's wet enough still. That may be a little dry over there. Um, okay, so... And then my palette knife. So I'm going to come in with my palette knife and uh, create some of my my tree trunks. Now, unlike the summer scene, we don't have the foliage blocking the tree trunks. So in the if it's a winter scene, you can do the entire tree trunk and branches. So I can come along here and go right from bottom to top. I see people do that in summer scenes and it looks so odd. But this will um, this will work here and I can even use the edge of the palette knife like this for really fine branches you know if I want to get some really fine ones I can just do this but for the tree trunk I need to do a little bit more of a scrape effect because I need it a little thicker so and then at the edge I can just start using the the chisel edge of this these are going to be mostly dark but I will come in with some birch birch trees as well their branches are always going to be or their tree trunks are going to be um, light even in the winter, but you can see that that's, that's going to give a pretty good wintry effect. Um, kind of wish I had a little more burnt sienna in that, but c'est la vie. All right, so I'm waiting for the right time to sort of scrape away some birch tree trunks. They're still filling in, <laughs> so... some branches in front of this one too. And basically one thing I'm doing here is I'm, I am scoring the paper a little bit, uh, which leaves a little scar, which is why the paint always grabs in those spots where I'm, well, you know, if you scrape your fingernail across your wet paint, uh, that it, you know, kind of becomes a permanent fixture so you get one chance at this but it's so fast and fun it's you know works so well and uh, all right so let's put let's see if I can get some birch trees going here I'm going to use a little more pressure a little bit down on its side to my my palette knife so I'm laying it down like this and getting scraping a little bit with the side because it kind of closes in a bit too you notice that All right, so let's, uh, that's gonna dry for a few minutes and, and the salt will start doing its thing and it'll look quite frosty and wintry and that sort of thing. But let's come back to our first one here and uh, take a look at what's happening. And a lot of this is still wet. You can see, you know, I had it pretty wet and you can see that right here, it's still quite wet. 
So there isn't really too much I can do in terms of removing the salt until this is 100% dry. And one thing, if you're using salt on your watercolor, one thing to keep in mind is that it's going to take a lot longer to dry than the paper will. Because every granule of salt is soaking up that extra moisture in paint. And then as soon as, um, uh, as, soon as the paper dries, it's still holding on to a lot. So wait until it's 100% dry. Now, I, I would probably go have lunch, um, come back uh, in an hour or so, and uh, then this would be dry enough. But I don't just rub it off with my finger. Um, and, and it wouldn't just start coming in and, and rubbing everything anyway because you want to test it. And this part over here isn't quite dry, but it's pretty close. And what I'll do is I'll use my little palette knife here and I'll kind of scrape it along and it'll sort of pick off all that salt. And I prefer to do that than use my hand because my hand will, um, my hand is, is softer than this tool, right? Than a palette knife. So this will actually pull it off better. Uh, you just, you know, be careful with it. You're using a light little scrape scrape like this on the, on the side, the chisel edge, you just run it along and the salt just picks off. Then you dump it off into the into the garbage or whatever. And uh, yeah, so pretty good effect. Um, if I scrape this now, not much will happen because it's mostly dry, like over here. Only where it's wet will it do anything. All right, so it's still a little bit wet in some of these areas here. I could put in more tree branches or something like that. You know, I can do that. But um, anyway, so that is my tree line um, demo. It's just kind of a fast and furious demo, but uh, it works. It works quite well. So um, use that in your uh in your watercolors look at the look at the effect that's happening here as as the salt is pulling in all that paint to every granule and it's creating that really wintry cold it looks cold right i mean you've got the cool colors in there and um, it's uh, really pulling in a lot of that giving that uh, that wintry look so I use that for watercolor cards. I use it for um, just sometimes for general backgrounds for some of my paintings. You would not want to um, um, scrape anything um, like if you if you had a tree or a cabin here, for example. If I were to place a cabin here, then um, I wouldn't want to be scraping through the cabin <laughs> because it. It, when you go to paint the cabin, like if I blocked it off and I later decided to come back in, I the cabin would make these dark marks wherever I had the scraping. Because like I said, you're scarring the paper. So just be careful um, when you're doing this not to um, scrape any areas where you're going to be placing other objects. I could paint on top, um, like let's say, let's say for example, I'm going to put a I'm going to put a figure here. Um, maybe I won't make them too dark. I don't want to make them too crazy. What will I use here? Um, I'm going to use a little... It has to be in a spot that's, that's nearly dry, but I'm going to put somebody in a... Oops, it's too wet. Too wet. Can't do it yet. But if if this were dry, I could actually put a person in here walking say walking along a road or something i could do that and um yeah so that's it for today and um yeah make sure you use that sometime it, or just play with it i mean it's, it's just a lot of fun i could take this if i wanted to and actually cut this into card size and make a great little card it's just fun to play um you know painting loose like this sometimes and just making things a little more impressionistic um you know, not quite the the tight realism that I always do, but um, sometimes I have fun, and you should too. Anyway, um, that's it, and we will see you next time. Thanks so much for coming.